How's it going everyone? Today, another daily dose. What do I gotta do today? I gotta paint some tanks, I gotta put some stuff in the studio, I wanna shoot a video on food, uh, what else? I don't know, but I am seeing a lot of my orange laser corridors out and about feeding, so I thought I'd show you, but I gotta do it from a distance, so I gotta zoom in, so stay tuned. So there you go, they're all out and about feeding, lots of babies are raised up. You can see that little guy right there. This colony's has been going nuts. And, uh, you know, we haven't really been able to show it off because at the top there, there was the betta barracks that's now down because I've sold enough bettas. And uh, so now the light's back in the front. I realize the glare's terrible. I'm going to try and walk up here. But they're probably going to scatter. I'm coming up on them as slow as I can. But lots of adults. This colony is huge. You know, it's easily... 50 to 100 fish in there, and uh, all in the 40 breeder. And the babies, my favorite part is they grow up in there, you know, it's a colony, but it's just so dense. I know, as I get a little bit closer here, they're gonna dart, because they always do every time I feed. There they go! They, they witness me coming up, and then, then it's game over. But lots of babies, yeah, they won't let me, but love this tank enjoying them quite a bit every time they see me they're real reclusive um, but anyway uh, we're gonna paint these tanks I'm gonna show you guys how I do that I've shown you in videos in the past and uh, you know I'll put a link up above or something like that and uh, yeah so gonna prep paint them with black paint I like to use well being that it's cold outside right now I've got rust-oleum paint um, I don't, I think the oil base works well. well. The latex, whenever I try to roll it on, it doesn't work as well. So I like an oil based paint. This is just black, flat. And uh, important steps I don't think I've really talked about in the past is make sure it's all the same temperature. So this has been sitting in the fish room for days. This came in a couple hours earlier, and that's been in there for days. Because if you, I just brought this tank in from the garage a couple hours ago. If I bring that in and I start painting it, it's going to be cold and cold paint doesn't do good things. Uh, what I found, in fact, I can probably show you, uh, two years ago, it was this cold in the winter, and I painted this tank. And so I got this weird blotch there. As the paint itself got cold, it restricted, or, you know, kind of, I don't know, it, it restricted or constricted, I guess, the best thing. It, it basically made that weird mark, and it did on this tank too. There's a lot of allergy in there, so I can't show it to you, but learned a lesson there. That was with spray paint, but nevertheless, I learned a lesson. So uh, you want to prep these surfaces with uh, like rubbing alcohol. Just make sure they're really clean, because we're going to put paint there, and if there's, you know, something bad on the glass, we put black over it, it's going to show forever. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these set up, and we'll do a quick paint. Oh, by the way, I just want to show these off. I'm not allowed to show them yet. They're going to be in a video coming up, but look at these guppies. They're the best guppies I've ever seen in my life. And I say that truthfully, I've never seen a better guppy. So, if I can get a side shot of them. So you're going, okay, yeah, they're decent, right? They're decent. Now let me blow your mind. Those are females. Those are female guppies. Those aren't the males. Those are female. Can you see the color on that? It's mind-blowing to me. Anyway, uh, unfortunately with those, I had the male come in dead. So the shipper says, hey, please, let me make it right. You know, and so they're going to ship everything out. But since they're imported, they're not going to come in until next month. So I did get like five strains of guppies that came in. And you'll see that in a fish room tour video. But I don't really want to talk more about those until I have the male because uh, they feel super bad, but I just, I can't hold it back. Those are the best guppies I've ever seen, for real. You know, and that's, that's in person, that's even on pictures. I don't know if I've seen a better one even in a picture. Those females are insane, to me anyway. Like, I, I, I spend a lot of my time looking at them just going, wow, those are amazing. So, anyway, let me get back to painting, because that's what I'm supposed to be doing today instead of just looking at female guppies. So, all right, let me get set up. All right, so I've got my black paint in the paint tray. I've just got like a normal nap roller here. Uh, you don't have to buy anything too crazy expensive, but don't buy the, the cheapest garbage you can find because it, it does make the job a little harder. Uh, 
you know, it's not low VOC paint, so what that means, it's gonna be a lot of fumes going on in here, so I'll be ventilating and stuff like that. Um, but it's better than outside, because outside it's like 35 degrees or something like that, and this paint just wouldn't work. So, uh, you know, we're gonna time lapse this, and usually I put two coats. It can be done in one coat, uh, but I like two. So I can let it dry, put the next one on. Uh, the other thing is, if you mess up, a simple razor blade will take this paint off, or if you choose, you want to do a different color, real easy. Only works on glass to use a razor blade, uh, but yeah, so let's get started. Now when you're doing this, uh, it's real easy to smear it, like if you just push down too much, you make a smear. So you want to lightly roll it, and that's the goal, so you're not smearing it. And then when you get to the edges here, like right up here and down here, you really got to push it into it to get it to get enough uh, paint in there. So you kind of have to do this push motion. And it's going to lay on thick, but that's how you're going to get it so you don't have it so that light is going in between once you put a light on it. So you know, it's not, not rocket surgery by any means, but uh, you want to put a little foresight into it just so you can get a decent a decent job done. You'll learn, you know, I've done hundreds of tanks at this point, so you learn some tips along the way. But don't be too stingy with the paint. Uh, you know, that, that just makes it harder and take longer. You want it to set correctly. So there's obviously other ways to paint tanks. I've shown you that with uh, spraying, with Plasti Dip. I've done it with normal spray paint. Uh, I don't know if my favorite is this. It's close to my favorite. The oil-based black paint works really, really well. Other colors is a little bit trickier, but uh, mostly you're gonna get a look like this, where you can see it's reflecting the light here, but it's real dimply and it'll dry. And I've got a fan blowing on it right now to speed up the process, but since in the fish room, you can see I went a little deep there. I'm gonna see if I can fix that. Um, it's gonna take a long time to dry. But in the fish room, because it's so warm, it shouldn't take as long to dry. Let's try and even that out a little more there. Because I, I wanna come and put a second coat on here. Because what happens is, most times you go, oh, it's covered, perfect. Don't worry about it. The problem is once you put a light from the other side, you'll see like, oh, it might've been a little light there and there, and same thing for here. So two coats pretty much makes that a non-issue. And uh, so yeah, now I'm gonna focus on shooting a video on the omnivore pellet food that I love. I haven't really been promoting it much, only because it's been hard for us to keep in stock. But now I've got, I think, something like 600 of these in stock, so. Now I can make a video about it, and that's what I'm gonna do. I've got uh, somewhere, I don't know where I put it, but I've got, I think, the underwater camera and stuff like that, so. Uh, I guess I should, I should show you the studio, too. That's what this big box is. Uh, I can show you where we're at in the studio at this point. By the time you see this video, you'll say, we've already seen that, Curry. It was in one of the live streams. True, live streams don't lag. They're, they happen every Sunday. These videos lag a little bit because take time to edit, that kind of stuff, but. Here's where I'm at. You know, I've got cords I gotta take care of still. That's still a problem. I need a vacuum in here, but the floor is done. Uh, over here, you can see where the two tanks are gonna go. Uh, that was just a placeholder. Um, got it free from a customer that came into the store. And you see here, it's all, all scratched up. Someone used a scouring pad there. Not good. Uh, and then I've got some tests I wanna do there. I wanna shoot a video about liquid versus uh, strip test kits. I don't know when that'll come out and when I'll get to it, but anyway, got both of the tanks here. Don't know how far I need to come out. I need to figure out filtration, that kind of stuff, and we'll go over that probably uh, maybe later or another video. Not sure yet. Uh, we've got lighting done. Here's all the lighting. Uh, I've kind of got it so that uh, this is the desk area. Here you can see no shortage of Mountain Dew and light bulbs. And we've got uh, microphone there and I need I ordered a mouse pad because I didn't own one. I switched to this glass top L-shaped desk. Uh, reminds me I've got the shade or the blinds I want to put up there and then yes you can see I was playing a little bit of WoW earlier just uh, sometimes it's good to turn the brain off so 
you know, for an hour while I was eating kind of breakfast. Just turned the brain off, didn't answer many questions, and then got started on the day. But it's an absolute mess out here. This is all stuff from the build out. Got my old table, that type of thing. But now it is time to start filming that video. Of course, in my haste to do double duty, I knocked this off, put paint on the floor. Uh, so I'm going to try and clean that up. I'm not sure if cleaning that up is the best idea or letting it dry and chip off. I think that's what I'm going to try and do is let it dry and just try and chip it off with a razor blade. So I think if I just get a rag, I'm going to smear it all around. So, yeah. Hit it with the tripod as I was trying to come around and shoot this video on feeding. Well, it's about 2.30 at this point. Just finished editing uh, the Omnivore pellet food video. So that's now going to start rendering. Now it's time to go probably look and make sure it's time to put on a second coat. But, you know, I thought I never show, I've never shown you guys how I edit. And so I get a lot of questions and I thought maybe just let me show it a little bit. Um, so yeah, if we kind of turn the camera around here, this is my laptop. This is a MacBook Pro. Uh, it's a few years old. I bought it specifically to do this. You can see here I've got my Mountain Dew equipped and uh, You know, but basically use Final Cut Pro and I'm gonna you know, I chop up the video a bunch and uh, You know I work with audio a bunch as well We do some fixing we do all kinds of stuff and you just do it through the timeline You put your cuts in and you you do all that and so this is a, a six minute video and I think I've spent, you know, roughly an hour or so cutting it together, and you can see kind of over here, these are all video clips um, from different videos and stuff, and, uh, you know, I just put a lot of, so these are all clips here, so you can see, these are all clips, they say July 31st, but the, the camera I was using, which was the underwater camera, was not... Uh, correct dated, but these are all the clips I shot here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I shot seven different tanks. I only use two of them uh, when it comes to like right here. These were different underwater shots for this video. So it takes quite a bit. A lot of people I think don't realize the amount of work that can go into, uh, I guess, editing a video and stuff like that. So hopefully this video comes out good. And you can see that at an hour of editing, and now it's rendering, so I'll, I'll go do something else. Um, but you can kind of see, like, it can take a lot of work. And so that's where when I always say, like, oh, I'm going to go edit for a while. It takes quite a while for me to, to edit a video together. Just something I like. You know, you got to you gotta listen to it a few times. you got to, you know, you got to piece it together. And, uh, you know, so that's why... Sometimes I'll have like wow or something just something going on in the background on mute that I can kind of tune in and out of and answer emails and Stuff like that while I'm listening to myself because that's half of it, right? You got to get the audio right Make sure it's you know Audibly what you want it to be and then you go back and you piece together all the the info of like okay Do I want to show this part? Do I want to cut to here? Do I want to do that? You know there's all those things so you know the in the fishing videos are the easiest because all you do is you go hey Here's what I did and uh, you know that's not too hard to show but when you're doing something more technical you spend hours on minutes of video so anyway that's that's the inside look at how I edit videos looks like most it looks like it's dry you know it's a little bit wet up here still because we put it on the thickest there let's see there's a little bit right there I'm not even sure I'm going to be worried about that, but I'll touch it up a little bit. I'm going to put one more coat on. We'll let that dry, and then um, we can get to putting them in the studio once my wife gets off work. Man, those guppies are mind-blowing to me. No joke, mind-blowing. It's a female. I can't stop looking at them. I'll get no work done all day long because I just look at these guppies. So, Anyway, back to coat number two. All right, well, now it's time to make up for a mistake. I won't say a mistake. I rushed it. So I put my studio together and uh, you can see there I've got audio stuff going and watching someone on YouTube. Uh, but I didn't realize, like I put this desk together like two days ago. I was so excited, right? Like, yeah, L-shaped desk, new desk, all right. And then the next day, my, my blinds show up. The problem is I gotta somehow mount these blinds up there and I'm like, 
two feet away, 30 inches away at least. So I'm going to have to like get on a ladder and like lean over and try not to break everything. Uh, so that's the next project. But so what do I do when I work on projects in here is I like to get someone uh, playing on YouTube and I noticed that life with pets, um, mostly focused on goldfish and bettas, I was doing a live stream and I thought, you know what, I want to I want to point something out here. The best thing you guys can do, and I say you you guys and just people watching, if you need help, search out maybe live streams and stuff like that that don't have insane amount of viewership at that moment. And so if you catch me in the middle of the night, I'm going to have way less people spam me with questions than I will at a Sunday night, for instance. And so like right now, there's about 40 people watching Life with Pets. And so really, you could really utilize... Uh, you know, some of this, I don't want to say smaller channels, because she's not even, you know, a small channel. She's got over 5,000 subscribers, but you can kind of dial in your questions with certain YouTubers and stuff like that and get real-time response. Um, just because, like, I asked a question, or I mentioned, you know, hey, what's up? And so she actually responded to it, whereas if there's 400 people, which is kind of the norm on my live stream, stuff's moving so fast you can't get to everyone and so it's a much more personal experience and when you need help I find that works really well and so you know last night I was hanging out on Charles Fish Tanks he was doing he did a couple of live streams and it was uh, Big Fly Multimedia, Big Steen, uh, myself, there was Joel who was there, there was I'm sure Lucas was there, Lucas LR Brett so you know and I want to say there's only about 20 of us but we're all hanging out kind of chatting and having a good time and I feel like a lot of you are missing that opportunity. And so subscribing to, you know, I hate to call them smaller channels. I don't know what else to call them, but other, the more channels you subscribe, the more chances you have of that interaction. And uh, so yeah, it's just a fun, good time. And I, I think a lot of you are missing out on that if you don't have a lot of the channels that have less viewers, just because you know, someone with a giant view count or a viewer count, they're going to be spamming that chat and it won't be as fun. It's when it's a few people, like, you know, at some points when you get down to like 10, 15 people, it's really fun. A lot of inside jokes, a lot of fish nerdery going on, uh, but I love it. So anyway, I'm going to turn the volume back up and I'm going to work on this and hopefully I won't uh, fall through my glass desk and die. So if this video never airs, that's what happened. If this video did air, then I haven't died. So... Uh, yeah, on to that. Once I get that done, and I've got this video uploading, I'm reasonably getting close to being done for the day until my wife gets home. She's at work, and I just gotta move those tanks and stuff, but then we'll, we'll wrap up and get some brain ideas going about them tanks. So, back to work. If I look all sweaty after this, it's because I was dangling off a ladder to hang that. So, as promised, hot and sweaty. It gets hot in this little studio, i tell you what. But, they're up. And not even too much swearing went down. So there it is. Got them up. I think it'll block most of the light. It's gonna work well. It matches the other one. And they're made out of vinyl, so... And I've spaced them off the window enough that hopefully I should be able to breathe around it, so... Mission accomplished, I think. Uh, yeah, so now I'll wait for the wife to get home. We'll move the tank, and... Uh, then we'll talk some options about those tanks, so... Yeah, well, it's the next day. My wife had to bake a birthday cake, all that kind of stuff, so I actually had to he-man that on myself. So, tanks up, let's take a look at it. We got both tanks up now. Got the black background in there. I haven't taken the, uh, uh, I don't know, backdrop, if you will, off yet. And uh, we got the 20 gallon right there, the brand new one. And, uh, you know, some reflection in there. But once we get to fill up with water and stuff, I think that'll be okay. And, uh, yeah, you can see here, like, this is... So this is a light I had laying around. That's a Fluval uh, Aqua Sky. So it's their low light... Well, I don't know if it's their lowest light fixture, but it's it's a, not the Fluval 2.0. And then over here you've got the light it comes with, which is... Not very bright, let's be honest here. I don't know how, how else to say it than, I mean, this is technically a light for a tank, but it's only three feet on a four foot tank and it's pretty dim. Whereas like if we come over here and I put my hand, you know, very bright and I'm, let's say six inches under and we come over to this one, you know, 
not nearly as bright, but it is what it is. I'm going to put a par meter on it eventually, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do with these tanks. And that's where you guys come in. Um, oh, what's this right here? What do we have? It's like weird, uh... I have to get a razor blade out, but do you see that? It's like the plastic itself when they molded the uh, the rim is weird. And same right here too. I've got like silicone. Um, you know what can I what can I say though? We got it at a great steal of a price, so you know a little bit of work required. Um, but oh man, it's dirt and just uh, anyway. So what do you guys want to see done with these tanks? Uh, so I'm pretty sure at least one of them has to be guppies because, you know, I've done a bunch of breeding fish for profit videos on guppies and cherry shrimp and I love guppies. So that's kind of a, well, duh, let's do that. Uh, but what else do we do? I've thought, you know, so these are, put suggestions down below um, and we're going to go over them in a video and stuff like that. And I think if I show the, the, thought process it will help and so the 75 gallon here's my ideas assorted guppies and then maybe in the 20 gallon we do a strain of guppies uh, I've also thought about doing platies uh, sword tails it's really hard to make money with them in my opinion for the amount of work you put in I've thought about doing African cichlids maybe Pseudotrophius solosi that I have out there maybe Trophius but Trophius don't sell enough to really make that much money uh, not that most Africans do either, in my opinion. Um, the other thoughts I had were keep a fish, and I don't know what fish it would be yet, but just keep a fish I like, and then grow lots of water lettuce and see if we can't sell that. Well, I know I sell a ton of it, but see if I can't, as a hobbyist, sell it on Aquabid, eBay, Craigslist, that type of thing, because... You know, it's, I'm not going to, I don't want to do it where it's like, well, I know I'm going to make a ton of money at my store. Not everyone owns a store, right? So I got to be able to liquidate this stuff in how a normal hobbyist would liquidate it. So, um, I'm sure there's other ideas, things that I'm not convinced about, like a Pistos, pretty big tank. That's kind of a waste. I'm trying to find something that will utilize this amount of space. Like even snails would utilize that much space because they're really messy, um, when they breed and that type of thing. Guppies, I think any live bear for the most part would relatively utilize the space. Um, you know, technically I could grow out some fish. I could even like buy some baby goldfish, grow them out and try to sell those at a profit. But, mm, you know, I really do like to breed fish. Um, so let me know what you guys want to see. And, you know, think about it. Not just like, Corey, put arowanas in there. Or, Corey, I like discus. Do that. Like, the goal of this is that we can make some money and then possibly upgrade the tanks, add another tank, pay for the hobby, that type of thing. So if you just tell me, Corey, go spend $1,000 on stuff, that's kind of going against what we want to do. Uh, we also need to talk about filtration. Uh, I've thought about sponge filters for both. I've thought about undergravel filters. I could do hang on backs. I could do uh, canisters. I could do internals. You know, there it, being it's in the studio, I want it to be relatively quiet. So I'm thinking, well, bubbles, it's not the quietest. I can put the air pump on the other side of the wall. That'll help. Uh, I thought about internal filters, but they're so expensive, you know. And I still, I really like to have air. So maybe a low trickle, maybe a low trickle sponge filter or under gravel, maybe. Um, I know I'm going to have plants in both because I just, I really don't want to run a fish tank without them. That being said, to do it in the 75, I think we have to upgrade the light. That, I'll put the par meter on, I'll see what I can do, but it's, maybe we can do floaters. You know, maybe we can start with the water lettuce, maybe, and uh, sell enough of that to buy a light, although that might take years. Um, but yeah, you know, let me know what you guys want to see in this tank. So here's what I'm thinking between the two tanks. The 20 gallon right over here, I'm thinking we keep that one relatively cheap. Uh, so it's, you know, kind of getting into the, I'm going to breed and maybe try and turn a profit. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm pretty sure I'm going to install a Stingray light. I've been looking into a lot of lights and I can't find something that looks halfway decent that's cheap. So like, yeah, I could get a chicken brooder light, you know, from like Home Depot and throw it on there and that's going to be less than 20 bucks. But I also want it to be, look okay so you could put it in your living room or something like that and you wouldn't be embarrassed if someone saw it. 
Uh, so I'm merging that line there. And everything here you're going to see in these videos could be done cheaper. You could go, oh, well, I found a garage sale for a dollar. Sure. But I want it so that it's easily um, repeatable for anyone. So like you could order a Stingray off of Amazon, off my website, something like that. Um, you know, and sponge filters and stuff. So I don't want to use anything crazy. And like when I get Java Moss for one of these tanks, I'm going to find a place to buy it online because I don't sell it online. So I'm going to find where I bought it and then I'm going to say, hey, maybe you guys could buy it here too. So it's, you know, kind of taking you along for the ride. I'm thinking I'm probably going to try and add this to like a, a weekly scheduled video. So like, oh, I should do an update on these tanks. And maybe some weeks it'll be really lame. Like, yep, it's another week. We fed them. We fertilized not much happened but then there'll be weeks where we're harvesting or we're going to a pet store or you know meeting someone in the parking lot to sell it to them or something i don't know uh, we'll see how it goes you know it, if it doesn't warrant an every week update then maybe it doesn't i don't know but let me know what you guys want to see about it and uh you know we'll go from there i gotta do a lot of planning i gotta do, i, I want to keep track of everything like i would love to be like we got a new light and then it goes like ching and then shows like the new total we've spent and then uh also when we sell like let's say a plant and we get three dollars it goes ka -ching, and it like we go up so like we can keep a running balance on these tanks I think that would be useful to even just for me to go wow it takes a lot more money to really start up a tank than I thought or oh it's not as bad as I thought and uh, so yeah let me know subscribe if you haven't already if you want to see the updates on this project you know going forward this is you know kind of ground base level right here and then it might get really detailed as we go uh, check out the podcast a lot of people have been really loving that uh, we've got the live stream every Sunday, which is uh, I'm getting ready for right now. Well, not right now, but a couple more, a couple hours from now. And then, uh, yeah, Wednesdays and Fridays, more videos. So thanks for your support, guys. Uh, whether you know, you're just watching, you're commenting, that type of thing, or you're ordering from the website, I appreciate that as well. Uh, it all kind of goes back into the bigger fund of lets us help everyone and teach and learn together. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.